a motorbike. And in a motorbike, you have an engine. The engine inside any motorized vehicle that has a propellant based engine uh, has a combustion chamber. This example has V twin. There's actually two pistons moving up and down, and they have to work in time because both pistons will push a shaft in the middle that then drives the wheel, that then drives the, uh, the actual back wheel of the, of the motorbike. So if those pistons are not working in time together, they, the shaft actually seizes up and the music, that is the engine, actually stops. So without timing and being synchronized together in time, the engine will stop. It's the same thing for ensemble work or in any, any general music really. Your audience can feel it if you go out of time. So timing is crucial. You have to be able to be synchronized together. So imagine these pistons working like this together, pushing and opposing each other. And they then turn this inside here, move a spindle. And that's how you stay in time. So when we count time as conductors, we count in a particular fashion so that the people who are in the ensemble can actually see us moving in time of the beat. So they get a visual cue as well as hearing how the music sounds and feeling that strong beat within the bar. Let's do some examples of counting in time. Let's do 2-4. So 2-4 means there are two beats in the bar. So my count for 2-4 is going to be typically like this. 1-2, 1-2. You can see a strong down beat in the centre. 1-2, 1-2, 1-2. Join in, try and copy me. 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2. There's a few different ways, depending on the accents within the music itself. Now let's try three beats in the bar. So three is an uneven number, so it has a particular fashion. I'll show you the main way of counting and then a secondary way. Here's the main way of counting three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you can see we're making a triangle. I have this last upbeat of the three. One, two, three. Join in. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Try and get used to that as a feeling. The other way of counting 3-4 is just in a line. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. You may know some music that's in 3-4 like waltzes. Okay, let's do another way of counting. Let's do 4-4 uh, four, four time. And this is most pop music. And for 4-4 four, four count we go like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the fourth beat is actually in the same position as the first beat, but it's a weaker feeling in my hand. 4, 1. The 1 has a strong sound. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's like a dance. It has a feeling, not just a count. So it's not just in time like a robot. It actually has a feeling. 1, 2, 3, 4. Try and join in and copy this. So you're going to go down strong in the centre for 1, to your left, to your right, up and then down for four, but soft. So it's up and down for four, soft, then up, down for one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, it's a bit tricky. Four. One, two, three, four. One. I think that's actually the symbol on the Augustine string packets. One, two, three, four. One. Two, three, four. It's like a little fleur. So that's how you count time. It's important to understand it because when you're in an ensemble arrangement or if you're being conducted by somebody, uh, you need to be able to be in time with the band. Just like the motorbike we saw before, if you can't do that, then the ensemble will start to fall apart and then no one will know where the music is. You'll start confusing other people with your out of timeness rather than being in time and feeling like you're part of the collective. So try and be in time.